Hi everybody, welcome to my beginner's guide, my new player's hints and tips to the amazing Starfield. But before I get started, and all the things I'm going to talk about are time stamped in the description below this video, I just want to say that I think with Starfield, um, it's really important to approach this game with the idea of it is an experience and not something to be beaten because it is absolutely huge and there are several aspects to this game that are quite different and that you'll find you'll enjoy in different ways. So obviously we've got the story that you can follow through and you've got the quests and side quests, some that aren't related to the um, main story, you know, that will send you off in different directions. Um, but you've got, you know, your traditional video game kind of adventure RPG. Um, but also you've got space exploration where you're going to be taking your spaceship to planets and moons and landing on them and wandering around and scanning and surveying them, discovering new minerals and flora and fauna and abandoned outposts and pirate bases, things like that. Um, you're going to be building your own bases as well, all over this galaxy. Um, your spaceship, you're going to be customising that as well, and that's amazing fun. And of course we can't forget that this is going to be a game that is going to have ongoing development over the next several years. Bethesda have put an awful lot of time and money into this game, and it's come out very, very well in my opinion, which means that there's going to be DLC, there's going to be updates, and they have got the backing of Microsoft to really turn Starfield into something very, very special indeed. Also, what I would say is that the game gets better and better the more you go on. When you first start playing the game, it can be a little bit vanilla the places you go to, and they can be a little bit sterile and boring, but trust me, it get better, gets better and better. Right, let's get started. Let's start at the beginning with character creation. Now, I'm not going to go into the character creation screen to create a new character, but I just kind of want to show you um, the things I kind of chose for my character but I do want to say this when you're going through the character creation screen and you're choosing your background and your traits when you first play Starfield you probably don't really have a good idea of what these the background especially actually means um, so don't read too much into it I think when this is really going to come into effect is when you do your second playthrough when you'll understand who the different factions are and what being one of those faction to start off with anyway means to the rest of your playthrough. So don't get too bothered by it. Similarly, with your traits as well, um, maybe have a little bit of fun. I mean, I had a little bit of fun with Hero Worship, so I have this adoring fan who, who can follow me around, but I got rid of him and I've put him on one of my outposts fairly quickly. And the kid stuff one with your parents. It's quite fun. I won't spoil what happens, but it's, it's, it's really good fun. And then I went with Terra Firma because I think it's quite fun the fact that my guy is a space explorer, but he's not very good in space. Um, but don't get, get don't get too absorbed by it. Um, basically, as well, because the traits as well, um, you can get rid of them as you go along. So choose something that you think kind of suits you. But once you start playing the game, you'll definitely think, especially with things like the background, you go, all right, I understand what this faction is. And maybe on your next playthrough, when you understand that, you'll then choose that sort of character. As you play Starfield, because it's an RPG, you'll unlock skill points, which you then uh, have to spend on training. And again, it's completely up to you which way you go through the various skill trees but if I just share with the things that I've unlocked that I found most useful to start off with then maybe that will give you some pointers so starting over on the starting over on the far right of the skill tree I think with the tech uh, skill um, this basically is worth unlocking rank one fairly quickly and then rank two when you can um, and this enables you to attempt and then unlock the various locked doors and boxes that you'll find around the um, around the maps that you visit um, and often there'll be good stuff in these boxes there'll be weapons there'll be loot there'll be space suits all sorts of stuff so it's worth doing that and it's actually quite fun as well now the way the unlocking works is you can unlock for example rank one straight away as soon as you've got a skill point but then to get to rank two you'll need a skill point to unlock it but you've also got to do a challenge so you'll have to unlock for example a certain number of locks um, so that's quite cool as well the fact that you can't just go through and do stuff um, 
definitely one you want to unlock is boost pack training almost straight away probably your first point because this enables you to use the boost pack which is the thing that gives you the double jump and once you've got that then you can start to uh, maybe spend some more points on it um, the boost packs work best on low gravity environments and as you find different boost packs you know you find better ones as you go along um, going along here um, I would say probably the most useful one was surveying surveying on the planets where you're wandering around and looking for flora and fauna and different types of min minerals and finding abandoned outposts and weird geological anomalies is actually really fun um, and quite relaxing and very different to the other parts of the game so having a scanner that has a longer range is good so it's worth putting points into this maybe you know one and two to get it uh, ranked up um, and then probably coming over to combat the gunfighting in Starfield I think is really good um, I've, I enjoy the combat and so by putting points into pistol certification lasers um, maybe not dueling but ballistics means that all of these sorts of weapons are going to do more damage now as far as getting better weapons go early game you're not going to be crafting things to make better weapons or making better weapons you're just going to be finding better weapons so the fact that you've got skills unlocked that just make those weapons better to start off with as soon as you pick them up is a good thing now demolitions is something I unlocked but actually isn't that useful um, so the idea with this is that once you've unlocked it when you throw a grenade you can see where it's going to go but that arc isn't particularly good the grenades do have a bigger radius uh, of damage but i wasn't that um, pleased with that however a trait that i really like is social with persuasion it's very nice to be able to go into uh, situations where you're talking to a character and there is lots of talking in starfield where you'll have a per persuasion challenge where you'll say You'll have to say it's either going to come down to fighting or giving somebody lots of money or completely failing. And the fact that you've got a better chance of persuading someone is is definitely worth doing. Also, when you combine this by taking some of the uh, special medicine that makes you more persuasive, means that you can walk into situations and you won't have to end up having to pay lots of money. Say it's a deal you're doing, you'll get it for cheaper sort of thing. Or if... Um, uh, you don't want something to end in a fight the fact that you can persuade someone so I've put two points into that and done the various challenges there and then coming across kind of the final one that I put points into was stealth mainly for the stealth meter and what that means is that when you go crouched it will say hidden and when enemies see you you know that now the actual stealth mechanic isn't that brilliant because enemies seem to see you pretty quick but I think it's probably worth unlocking the stealth meter so you just know that when you, when you are hidden um, but it's not we're not like playing Metal Gear Solid or something like that where the stealth meter really matters at the moment I think probably when you unlock it all the way then um, you're going to become very powerful and that kind of comes on to really talking about end goals with uh, with all the training and all the perks in Starfield and what I recommend you do is go down and look at the sort of last two tiers the top well I guess you could go the top two tiers for each skill tree because there's some really special stuff in here that will totally transform the way that you can play the game um, but in order to get here you have to spend an awful lot of skill points in that particular tree and so if you are looking at something like um, Let's have a look. Here we go. So ship command. So you can have lots of crew members on your ship. And the reason why you do that is if you have lots of crew members on your ship, they bring their perks to your ship if they're applicable. So you can have a very powerful ship. You're going to have to put um, sort of 12 skill points into this tree here. And that's a lot because you don't earn skill points that fast, that that um, that quickly. Um, similarly with, you know, combat. Um, here we go. So if you want the ability to... Um, you now do 100% more damage to downed enemies. You know, you're going to have to put a lot of skill points into that. But have fun. Don't get too bothered by the choices you make. And if you do make a wrong choice, I mean, you've learned and you can you can move on. Um, also, I'd probably say there's no need really to put too much, um, too many points into the crafting elements. I don't think early game either because crafting and base building, that sort of thing, really come into their own. Uh, mid to late game rather than when you first start off now there is a fair amount of level gating in starfield so for example 
if I was to try and uh, attack this ship, we can see if I put, turn my scanner on with the top left button, uh, it's level 22, so pretty dangerous. Um, that one, level 2, not that dangerous. Um, being blue means that they are friends with me, so I shouldn't really attack them unless they want to become my enemies. Um, and the same goes with um, NPCs sort of wandering around the road when you're fighting them. They'll all have levels on them. Um, and then you'll see your level. So, for example, you can see here, I'm level 18. If you do get into a situation, especially with ship combat early on, where you just get destroyed straight away or very, very quickly, um, and you, um, we're coming up against a number of ships as well, don't worry about it too much. It just means you're not ready yet. You know, your ship needs to be upgraded or you need a better ship. Um, or you need better weapons and better shields and that sort of thing. And then just choose a different path because there are many, many paths through, through this game. Similarly comes to enemies as well when you're on foot. So you see an enemy and their level will be much higher than yours. You might even see a little skull next to it. So you know it's going to be tricky to take them on. Now, when you're on foot though, you can win um, one-sided battles because you can retreat. You can sort of uh, fool the uh, NPC AI, you know, go behind rocks. Um, especially with, like, with um, animals on planets, you can engage them a little bit, do a bit of damage, scuttle away, go back in again. So that is doable, but generally when you're in space, space combat is much more difficult against enemies that will um, that outclass you and you will probably die quickly. But don't worry, just go off, do a different um, mission because there's so many to do. Eventually you will be powerful enough to take on those enemies and prevail. Now, the gunplay and weapons in Starfield, I think, are really, really cool. But they can be a bit confusing when you first start off with. So if you go into inventory and you bring up all the different weapons that you found, there's kind of basically, to start off with, there's four real different types of weapons that you come across. And if you click in your left stick, you can kind of sort them. Um, I like to sort them by uh, um, ammo, because the ones that are using the same ammo generally are the similar sort of um, gun. Um, and what you do is you get uh, melee weapons, like this sword, um, and melee combat is actually quite good. You can get in close with people, and especially like with this sword that gets, the more you use it, the more damage it gives. It's very, very good. The only thing you've got to watch out for that is if you're with a um, an NPC uh, follower, a companion, and they've got grenades, if you go in close, they'll keep lobbing the grenades in and damaging you, so watch out for that one. Then you get projectile weapons. So these are the guns that fire bullets. Um, just like you know, you're used to in your, your, your shooters like Call of Duty and things like that. But there's lots of different types with lots of different ammos. Then you get your energy weapons, um, and let's bring up. So you get things like this, um, this Orion. So this basically is a laser gun. Um, but then you also get the EM, the electromagnetic laser guns. Um, and what these do is they're specifically designed to damage robots, but they will also disorientate and incapacitate humans as well. So that's a thing to sort of look at. And because this is an RPG, the different weapons have different levels of damage. So for example, if we look at this Keel Holder legendary pistol that I found, we can see that it does 64 damage. But you need to relate that to the fire rate of it as well, and the range and the accuracy when you're judging things. Because so this this uh, this pistol does 64 damage, but it's got a really well, it's got quite a high fire rate, 140, um, and the range is 24, so kind of middling. Um, but if we go down to something like um, this shotgun, which has a, a damage rate of 109, but the fire rate is only 10. And then if we go down to this uh, laser rifle, um, the energy, uh, the damage is 30, but the fire rate is 33, and the range is 50, so it's higher. And then if we go to something like this um, calibrated Maelstrom, now this is actually one of my favourite guns. It only does 23 damage, it has a fire rate of 60, a range of 48, but if you look at the different bits it's got attached, it's got a long barrel, um, which will increase the damage. It's got a compensator to reduce um, recoil. Um, it's semi-automatic, and it's got a nice scope on it as well. And let's go through. So this handgun, 62. Um, this Grendel just does 20. Semi-automatic, so it's, it's not, not my favourite one. And this old earth hunting rifle. So this is a VSS, basically, a Russian 
um, Special Forces sniper rifle. Only does 33 damage. However, the fire rate is 40, which is okay. I mean, it's semi-automatic. But the range is 100, so you can really pick off people from a long way away. And it has a very good scope on it. And your cutter, actually, although your cutter only has an energy of 4 on a range of 3 meters, it does loads of damage up close. And in fact, if you're in close quarters inside buildings and things like that, your cutter is a really good weapon to use, and you'll automatically equip your cutter when you're in um, when, when you're in scanner mode. So the way that I organise my weapons, and if you press Y, you can kind of favourite them. I tend to ha try and have one of each ammo type on my D-pad, um, and it would always be the highest um, damage version of that particular one because some types of ammo can be quite difficult to get hold of to start, especially early game when you're not quite sure about where all the merchants are and stuff like that um, and other, other things you tend to have loads on um, so for example if we come out of here and I then bring up my d-pad and then equip my uh, so I don't want to equip my cutter I want to equip my equinox right let's change that my cutter should be there right okay let's just come out of here let's go back into here so my cutter here we go that should be there and my where's my weapon of choice there we go my orion i want to have that there okay there we go that's better so if I bring up my D-pad, so my Orion, you can see I've got 400 units of ammo for it, which is quite a lot. Um, and then if we, <coughs> excuse me, if we then go into my breach, my shotgun, I've got 131. Um, and then if we go into my Razorback, I've got 52. And sometimes you'll find, you see, especially early game, you won't have much ammo of a particular type, so it's good to have one of each. So that would be my advice for organising your weapons. You know, have different types on different parts of your D-pad, but only have the most powerful one. Now, when it comes to what you should do with the guns that aren't quite as powerful, early game, hang on to a few, because what you're going to do is you're going to give them to your NPC allies. In fact, there's an argument to give them the most powerful guns as well because they uh, tend to be pretty good with them. But there we go. So that's kind of the weapons, and hopefully that gives you a few ideas about how to use them and how to organise them on your D-pad. So this wouldn't be a Bethesda game if inventory management is something that can be a little bit of a challenge and you need to get your head around. So if you go into your inventory, you'll have probably noticed in the bottom left hand corner, you've got some values and you can see that my character under mass has a maximum carry of 140 and that currently I've got 65. But at some point you will become over encumbered. You'll pick up too much stuff and it's easy to do that. When that happens, you will be using more stamina, which means that as you're moving around, if you look in the bottom left hand corner, you see my oxygen bar going down. And if you're carrying lots of stuff, that goes down very, very, very quickly. Once your oxygen is gone, you start building up CO2, and when the CO2 gets too high, you start taking damage. It doesn't match, matter too much when you're just wandering around in a city or a safe place or on a planet where it's safe, but if you're in a firefight, that can be a bit of a problem. And what's really annoying is that you can't travel when you're over-encumbered, but you'll probably have a companion with you. So if you go up to any of your companions and go, let's trade gear, what you can then do is if you press LB to get to your inventory, you can then go to anything and then you can give it to them with trade button, which is in the bottom middle saying A, trade. And if we go back to Andrea's, uh, we can see if we look at her mass at the bottom, she can carry up to 135 and she's only got six. She's got loads of space to carry stuff. Um, and at some point you'll have multiple um, followers hey, and so they can all carry lots of good stuff. Also, your ship has a cargo hold 
So you press X to get into it. Now my ship, if you look at the bottom left hand corner, has a maximum car carrying capacity of 450, which is quite a lot. But as you can see, I've managed to exceed it at the moment. I've gone up to 472, so I need to get rid of some stuff. Now we could just go in and we could jettison stuff, just like you could drop stuff from your inventory. But it's probably got a value and you may well want to sell it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But by all means, transfer stuff from your inventory to the cargo hold to reduce your weight. Also, around your ship, you've probably got little lockers and cubby holes that you can store stuff in as well. So that's very good. But at some point, you're going to want to get rid of stuff, and you don't, you know, you don't want to jettison or just leave it somewhere. So we've come in this case, we've come back to New Atlantis because this is a, a nice, easy well, place to um, to get rid of stuff. And also, I'm going to show you how to buy stuff as well. And at almost every starport that you land at, there will be, and space station, there'll be a ship services area. Uh, sometimes it's in a building where a fella will, that? where you can upgrade your ship and repair it and buy new ships. But you'll also have one of these, a trade authority kiosk. And these are very quick ways of going into it where you can go into your inventory and you can just sell stuff. Now you won't get much money, in fact it can be quite disappointing when you see the value of something and you go, ooh, but when you come to sell it you don't get as much money. But you can quickly get rid of lots of things at these kiosks and then be on your way with a nice um, empty inventory on your ship and on your person because you can sell from your ship's cargo hold, hold directly to the hey, Trade Authority kiosk. Now, let's have a look at places where you can buy things as well early game. Now if you've explored New Atlantis you'll know that there's various um, uh, shops and traders there. But probably one of the best places to start off with is on New Atlantis. If you go to the commercial district we can go to the United Colonies Distribution Centre. Um, and when you're wandering around New, New Atlantis and any of the other areas, often they have rather handy, nice signs. So UC Distribution is up here. So we can run up here. Um, and so as soon as you've got a few, few credits, don't worry, you know, if you need some ammo for a particular gun, if you need some resources because you've had to go at crafting, um, just come to this place. And if you go around to the left and have a chat with this young lady here. I'm afraid, due to recent legislative action, welcome to UC Distribution. Oh, well, certainly. We'll see. They've got lots and lots of stuff to go through. Uh, always recommend um, getting more. Has she got any? Or maybe I've bought them all. Um, get the med uh, packs uh, you always want those you, c you can't have too many of them well I guess you could have too many of those but you don't want to be running out of them um, right right come back what talking about. so yeah the med packs see I've got 33 now I'm never going to use 33 on any particular quest but the fact that I've got them means that I don't have to worry about dying another cool place early game to get stuff is if we go back to the landing field we, we can go back to the well now if you haven't been to the well already, it's probably the first area in Starfield when I was like, oh yeah, this is cool. This is a cool game. Because although New Atlantis kind of looks alright, doesn't it? Um, it's a little bit sterile, I think. Especially when you compare it with something like Cyberpunk. It's all a bit, you know, clean. <laughs> and you're like, alright, oh, okay. Um, but if you run up this way... Um, and there's all these there's bars and shops that you can explore and you can buy funky things to wear or things to drink. If you come up here and go around this corner here. Now there are different ways into the well, but this is one of the easier ones. So if you come in here and you hit this elevator or lift as we call it in the UK, this will take you into uh, the well. Which as I say, I remember coming here when I first started playing. Stuff and I was like, yeah, here we go. This is this is a cool game. This this looks this looks very very cool indeed. And we go in here and we've got UC surplus. We come in here. We can have a chat with this chap. You ask me? Let's see what you've got. got. And you can see he's got loads of stuff, ammo, weapons, and some very other stuff. Now different traders have different things and have different prices. Um, and if, for example, you go to like a pirate place, uh, like the Crimson Fleet, you may well find they have some very different things as well. And then when you go to like the city of Neon, they have some very different things. 
so it's worth looking at the different traders and it's also worth when you first start when you meet a trader for the first time have a chat with them Hello. <laughs> Because sometimes they'll give you things for free and they'll let you in on the, the different sort of information. But there we go. So if you want to manage your inventory, remember you can give stuff to your NPC, you can load stuff into your ship's cargo, and then you can easily come to um, places like New Atlantis, visit the uh, Trade Federation kiosk, unload stuff, or come, west, come somewhere like um, the UC Surplus or the UC Distribution Centre to buy things. So we're in orbit around the planet and one of the really cool things you can do in Starfield is ignore the stories and the quests and just go and explore. So if we bring up the star map um, and we kind of zoom out a little bit, let's go somewhere where we haven't been and we're going to survey a system, well a planet anyway, Proclon B, I don't think I've been here, so let's just select this. Let's set a course and let's jump into orbit. There we go. Never gets old this. <laughs> and you may say, well, what's the point? Well, if you survey planets, if you do a complete survey, you can go and see um, a chap in the eye, which is a space station orbiting. Um, uh, your home planet and he'll buy surveys off you but also it enables you to find suitable places for bases and to mine resources also none of the planets well none of the ones I've come across are completely bare uh, or moons unless I think gas giants actually might be so for example we're, we're in this system here so if we um, just press uh, I think it's A and it'll say open planet map so I press X and we've got this planet map now what you'll see if you haven't been somewhere before it will say scan um, and you scan and then you'll get your resources up so you can see where things are so later on when you're building outposts it could be that you you know you want a particular resource and you want to put an outpost down there to mine it but what we can do is we can see that um, I've managed to scan six of the seven resources on this planet, you know, being on the surface, and I've found one out of three traits. So traits tend to be natural and or geological formations, or sometimes they're um, other sort of structures. Um, and when you visit them and when you scan them, there's probably something there. They're, they're a bit unusual. But what you can do is you can just say, okay, so what do we need to find? Well, I tell you, let's just plonk ourselves down anywhere. So we just say, select landing target. Oh, not in the ocean. We can't land there. Fair enough. Uh, the frozen plains. Let's land here. And I'll show you kind of how scanning and surveying works. And it is good because you can just wander around. Now, you can't walk around the entire planet. Um, but you'd be amazed at what stuff is here and what things you do come across. Um, now some planets won't have flora and fauna, moons tend to just have minerals on them so they're relatively easy to find the stuff um, and other stuff, so let's get out of the ship, other places will have plants and they will have animals. Here we go, so first things first, RB and we can just bring up our scanner and there we can see, so for example there is some minerals, some tetrafluoride, so if I just press A on my controller, if I hadn't already discovered that it would then be added to the resources. Now these plants here, as you can see, the frost reed, I've 100% scanned these. Now with plants and animals, you can't just scan one, you've got to scan a few. So this, so right, so I've scanned all these herding graphite grazers. Um, but what you want to do is you want to sort of go somewhere like this and just look around and we can see there's an unknown thing over there. So if I just press A, that should scan it. It's a structure. In fact, we can see there's a structure from here, can't we? So I could go over there and I could investigate that. That probably isn't a trait, though. What we got over here? That is a bit far away. There's some flying animals. Is there anything else we can look at? Flying animals. Okay. So what we do now is... All right, there's something else there. That's unknown there. So that's an anomaly, so that could well be a trait. And all you need to do is you just wander along and you just point your scanner at things 
and then press A and then it'll appear. You can if you want try and mine stuff, depending I don't think I can mine fluorine. No, I can't mine fluorine. Uh, here, there's some copper here. Now, we've already found copper. It's it's that that ill one we're looking for, aren't we? So I can take that. I've scanned all these. Um, if you look at the ground as well, uh, there's argon, so I could press A. So, if you, for example, wanted to build a post, an outpost to mine argon, you would put it on top of this area here, because it says argon. There we go. So we've got a structure here, and just keep your scanner up all the time. Remember, your scanner is a very good close-range weapon. So, if uh, an um, nasty animal comes up to you, just blast it, and you'll probably kill it. What's this here? Oh, somebody's left a trauma pack there. Now, when you've got your scanner on, you can't do certain things like open doors. I've scanned all of those. So we found an abandoned outpost, which is pretty cool. So we can have a look around. Um, there could well be enemy... Uh, uh, sorry, well, nasty robots here that don't want to see us. We may well have to find them. Oh, in here, in this case, there's loads of spaces. So for the purpose of this video, I don't want to get into a scrap with them. But we could kill all those and get their kit off them. Go down, find what's inside. Um, often you've got... Oh, we're in the middle of a... Oh, right, that guy, is that guy... Oh, that's my teammate. Come on. Um... You can go down the side, inside the, the, the structure, and you find all sorts of wonderful stuff in there. Um, and I think these are kind of... Have I scanned all of these? Yeah, we scanned all of these. I think they're kind of randomly generated. They are similar from planet to planet, but they do have different aspects to them. And basically, that's what you do. You're just wandering around with your scanner, pointing at things, pressing uh, A on your Xbox controller, until you've discovered everything. And once you've discovered everything, um, you can then go back to the eye. I think it's Ivan at the eye. And then you can um, give him the slate that will have been created. And then you can earn some credits. But I think this is a really good... This is very No Man's Sky, this sort of thing. And if every time you get stuck, just look back at your ship. Uh, press A, fast travel. And we can go, yes. Unless we are over-encumbered. If we're over-encumbered, then... Um, you can't and we can get up and if for example like in this situation I think this planet's a little bit cold so I've taken a little bit damage we can go to bed to recover the damage or we could use some medicine to uh, to recover um, our health to get rid of uh, whatever's happened there but if we go into the pause menu we can look at our status I've got burns so I've pro probably got burns probably from frostbite I think so what I can do then is I can look at my inventory go down to aid and see if I've got anything for bandages they yeah they'll do that so i take the bandage and i'm good to go again my health is back to full so there we go surveying and scanning highly recommended when you go to the skill tree there's things you can do to make your scanner better not only your hand scanner but your ship scanner can become a lot better as well so you can discover things like traits from hey, orbit army. and also scan planets and moons that are farther away now Although one of the great things about Starfield is flying your spaceship around um, and walking around cities and kind of discovering things you're going on, Bethesda has done some amazing work with fast travel in this game and made it very, very convenient indeed. And it really becomes a core of the things you're doing. And there's many ways of fast traveling. So, for example, let me get out of the spaceship first. If something's on your mind. So basically, as soon as you've discovered a place, you can fast travel to it, um, no matter where it is. So if I bring up my scanner, for example, we discovered uh, this abandoned outpost. So I can now fast travel to that selected location. So I can say yes, and I can zip over there. So let's say in a situation like here, where I go to this abandoned outpost that I've discovered on a planet, I get in a fight with a load of spacers or pirates, um, and I get myself into a little bit of trouble. I need to go back and you know get some more meds or something like that. Well, you can go backwards and forwards very, very quickly. Also, once I bring my scanner up as again, we can see there is the landing area. There's the frontier. There's my ship. So I can just press A, fast travel to there, and I can nip straight back into my ship, which is very, very cool. Um, 
also, and this is very important as well, when you're in the missions as well, um, what we can do is if we go to something like miscellaneous, who have I got to go and see? Speak to Nesha, light in the darkness. And um, what we could do is if we just select this mission, so you see it's gone blue, and it's important you, you select the kind of the sub bit of the mission. We can now just say X to set course, and it's saying this is where you need to go, X to land, and without having to go into orbit or go anywhere, it's going to take us to the part of the city that we need to be in to, to complete you know to, to carry on with this particular part of uh, part of the, the level and then we should see a little blue dot somewhere on the screen so that's where we've got to go so there's no need to bother you know going back to your ship getting your ship going to orbit going into the um, star map and then deciding where, where you want to go but you can do that if you want to um, this is another really cool thing as well so if you're ever wandering around and you're like, right, I just want to get back to my ship quickly now. Um, if you just turn your scanner on and then bring up the service map service map with RB, you'll see straight away you've got Y, fast travel to ship. So you can just press that Y and you'll be back in your ship straight away. So it's very possible and very easy within Starfield to skip around lots of different missions. Um, it, uh, here we go. So let's bring up missions. So we could go... Activities, what activities you've got. Talk to Frank Rinnick, set course. Right, so this is going to be somewhere else. So this is over at Volley. It's doing all this automatically. Press X to land. Again, without doing anything else, within a matter of seconds, and I guess this is because of the super fast hard drives we have in our consoles and on our computers, you're there. I'm on a different planet now. I've never been here before. Uh, oh, actually, no, I have been here. This is... Uh, have I been here? Where are I? Followed... How far? No, I don't think I've been here. Wow, what a cool place this looks like. I think I've been here. I can't remember. But hopefully you've seen there for us there how easy it is to move around in this uh, this galaxy, the galaxies within Starfield. There's no need to spend lots of time doing stuff. There is an argument, of course, that this isn't quite immersive as something like cyberpunk where there isn't that many fast travel locations and you do oh there's a big thunder and you do have to spend a lot of time um tra uh, moving around in your car on foot or on your motorbikes but you know there is a lot more missions and quests and side stuff to do in starfield so the ability to fast travel very conveniently basically from anywhere you know i welcome it and i'm i'm kind of glad they've done it So we're in orbit and I wanted to talk a little bit about space combat because it can be very tricky early game. If you do run into space combat where in particular planets or systems where you keep getting just destroyed straight away, it's probably because the enemies are too hard for you. So go down a different quest line um, rather than just keep hitting yourself against a brick wall. Because as you upgrade your ship and your weapons um, and your skills, you will get better at that sort of stuff. But kind of the basic things to understand are, if you look in the bottom left hand corner of the screen you'll see we've got lasers, ballistic weapons, missiles, engine shields and grab drive and below that we have our bar, at the moment mine says 0 to 18 but it means we can change the power around between our ship so if you've got anything spare, say I had I've turned shield down, if I had anything spare what I tend to do is I put into shields first then if I have anything else spare I will then uh, put that into uh, say lasers uh, like that um, so I'm, my defense is high my missiles and my ballistics and my lasers are high as well um, I guess I could take one away from engine and put that into lasers as well that means I'm going to be a little bit slower the other thing to remember is if you look on the bottom right hand side of the screen we've got shields which at the moment are in fact, I don't want them to be at 80 I want them to be at 100 so let's put that into shields um, you'll see the hull <coughs> integrity and the shield integrity. Once the shields start to go down, your hull integrity will go down. As long as you've got shield parts in your 
a ship's uh, inventory or in your inventory you can click in your right stick and it will then attempt to repair your ship and it will give it a bit of it's like taking a med pack when you're when you're on foot so if you haven't got any shield parts make sure you go to you know the, the united distribution center or another trader and buy some because ship parts are med packs for your ship and they will keep you in the fight and then as long as you don't keep getting hit your shields will then regenerate and then you can join the fight so let's imagine in front of us we've we've got to a system and there's some enemy ships and they're like oh we're gonna kill you they've got the red marks on and that they're coming towards you what the first thing i think you should do is you should hit uh L uh, left stick, so you can click that in and you boost towards them. So you um, really shorten that distance. So then you kind of go past them. And then if you look on the left hand side, we've got our throttle. And you want to kind of put that in the middle area where it's near those big white uh, lines because that means you'll turn quickly. And then you can flip around and get behind them. Now, if they're getting away from you, obviously you may well want to um, increase your speed to catch up with them or boost. But then you want to hit them with everything you've got. Now, the idea is that lasers do more damage to shields and ballistic weapons do more damage to the structure of the ship itself or people if you're fighting on foot. And then missiles are good for kind of a bit of both. But I would say I, what I do is I just alternate my right and left stick. I just lasers, ballistic, lasers, ballistic, and I'm just giving them and then firing missiles off as soon as I've got a lock on. In fact, when ships are very close, you don't even need to get locked. Just fire a missile and it will hit them. And that's and then you just chase them around. If all of a sudden you get a missile lock, enemy missile locks, what I then do is I'll hit boost to kind of get away. But I tend to go in, like to go into like a corkscrew. So I'll point my um, put my uh, right stick sort of in one of the corners, so my ship is kind of tumbling. Um, and then I will move my left stick over to the left or the right. In fact, it's probably easy to see it like this. So we kind of we've got a tumbling motion. We're top corkscrewing around like this to avoid the uh, missiles. And then I'll go back once that's once the missile lock is gone. I'll go back and I'll get behind the enemy that I'm chasing. Um, if there's someone closer, I'll swap to a closer uh, enemy. And then you just keep blasting away, blasting away. Lasers, ballistics, lasers, ballistic missiles to get rid of their shields um, and then destroy them. I very rarely try and run away from a fight because if you just blow up and you get killed, it's probably because you made a silly mistake to start off with, like, you know, you moved all your power away from shields or they're just too high and you can bugger off and, and go do something else. But if you remember those basics of clicking in your right stick to do to apply the med packs to your ship, those ship parts, boost towards your enemies to get behind them and hit them with everything you've got, um, yeah, you should be okay. Now, later game, you can unlock different, uh, improve your targeting system so that you can actually take out things like their engines and their shields so that you can board them and have a fight with their crew and then take over the ship. But that's the subject of another video. Now, crafting. Crafting is an important part of lots of modern games and especially RPGs. However, don't get too obsessed by it early game in Starfield. Um, it's something that you're really going to get into, I think, mid to, to late game and end game as well. Because most of the time, when you'll want to, um, say, get a, a better gun or a better spacesuit or better uh, clothes or more ammo or first aids and things like this, you're going to be buying them. You know, because you, you've, you'll have plenty of money and you can go to a trader and just buy a load of stuff. Um, and it's nice and easy. Um, however, if you do want to get into uh, crafting, you've got certain skills in the skill tree that you have to unlock. Let me show you those. So, if we go into here, we'll see, for example, within the science, you need to, if you want to unlock the ability to modify weapons with different weapon mods, you've got to unlock the weapon engineering mod. Um, and then, you know, you need to rank that up as well. And that goes the same for things like spacesuits. Um, what else have we got? Uh, botany for, for uh, what we got astrophysics, chemistry, for example. There we go. You can create improved chems research and additional chems. So for me, I'm not going to be spending really that many skill points early game on these particular things because the, my route to getting better spacesuits is to find them. But later on, when uh, maybe I'm not coming across as many great spacesuits and I want to add mods to my existing spacesuits to get them better, then that's when I'm going to be getting into crafting. Um, 
A couple of hints and tips, tips though is that when you actually build an outpost or a base the industrial workbench is very important because you can use it to make things to make more bases um, and also um, what you can do is if we go into for example this oh, let's find something like this let's have a look aluminium so if you see that aluminium uh, this uh, mag pressure tank um, if you look on the top right corner it says I've got I only need one nickel but I need two aluminium but I haven't got any aluminium but you see those little magnifying glasses that's because I'm tracking that particular thing so if you ever need to make something um, or if you want to uh, unlock something in the research lab so the way that works is you have to do the research to be able to unlock stuff <laughs> um, let's go down to weaponry so let's go through so for example if I want to unlock the ability to make grip and stock mods too if we go into it we can see that I need tungsten polymer and adhesive um, which I've actually got have I got something if you see it's in the middle of the bottom it says untrack project so I can press X and that takes that away now the ability to add these little magnifying glasses to projects and things that you want to make is quite good because it means that when you come across those particular resources they will have a little magnifying glass. The problem is that it doesn't tell you what that particular thing is for. So although I might, might well want some polymer, polymer for this research for grip and stocks, when I find some polymer, it doesn't tell me that, and it doesn't tell me how much I need either. So my recommendation for you is that you have a pen and paper handy, or maybe you have a document open on your phone or on your lap, on your computer or on your tablet so that you can say actually I want to make this thing I want to research this thing and I need three polymer so then you know to go back and spend some money on it this is especially important when you're getting into building outposts now building outposts is it's really easy you can crack on with it straight away if you like but you'll be limited in the sort of things you can make because you won't have the resources to do so so hit this is an outpost that I've built um, and what you need to do is you need to place down an outpost marker first so when you land somewhere just get your scanner out and it will say at the bottom it will say outpost X and you press X and you put one of these things down and once you put that down that then sort of claims that area you can just sort of see that yellow boundary and within that area you can start building stuff um, if you want people to come to, to, to put crew members on there you build a uh, airlock and you put a hab on it but you're probably m mostly going to be putting down extractors um, that will take whatever the extractor is sitting on. They'll then take that mineral out um, and then you can store it and you have to power it and all that sort of stuff. Um, but if we go into build mode, I'll show you. So if I press X to go into here, um, you can look around. So this is on my base. Let's change the view so we're kind of looking down on things. And then I can go through the different things I want to make. So let's say I wanted to make this storage container here um, to put stuff in, say to put in the stuff that this extractor is pulling out. If you, look the bottom, top, if you look in the top left hand corner, you can see that I need 14, three adaptive frames, of which I've got 14, iron, of which I've got enough, but I haven't got enough aluminium. And again, we've got that, I can track that with X. So. You can see we can turn the turn on and off. So if I go somewhere, uh, ooh, that was the one we wanted, wasn't it? If I go somewhere, it will then tell me, right, you need some aluminium, but it won't tell me exactly what I need it for. So I would write my bit of paper uh, for my bait, my Zamka outpost, um, for some storage, I need some aluminium. And I will trash travel off, get some aluminium, either mine it on a map planet that's got aluminium, or I do have another outpost that's producing aluminium, bring it here and I can make it. Now as you go on there's different things you can make that can make this process almost automatic to move resources around. Um, but tracking stuff I would say do, do it with a pen and paper so that when you do find stuff you know what it's for and then you can return there. The way that I tend to do this is that I um, we will be playing some main missions in Starfield and when I just want to relax and chillax and enjoy sort of the environment I come and I work on my outposts um, because it's completely separate from the main part of the game um, and it's a lot of fun. You could argue I left one of the most important things about Starfield to the end and that is the role that your 
companions and followers take in the game because they really can make a big difference we've talked about how they can be used as pack horses to carry stuff but they bring certain skills traits and benefits to you and your ship and the experiences you will have throughout Starfield so when you're wandering around and you're doing missions and completing quests and sort of stuff you'll get the option to ask people to they'll ask to become your follower or they might follow you um, automatically because it's you know it's needed for that particular quest and they may well ask you know can they join your crew um, and you also get a chance to look at their skills which you're going to talk about in a minute and generally because there's no upper limit to the number of followers you have I would say you know yeah yeah take people on because you don't have to have them with you at a particular time so the way it works is that on your ship you can have a certain number of followers uh, on it dependent on the ship the number of hab units are on the ship and the skills you've unlocked generally it's two or three plus your companion so in this case I've got my companion well, uh, sorry my companion at the moment is Andrea and we've also got Barrett and we've got um, Sarah um, and then we've got our friendly robot who's down below guarding the ship just outside of it that way and I've come across these people and I've invited, to, invited them to join me now if we go into our uh, menu screen and then we go into our ship here and then we press Y to bring up the crew it's a bit of a misnomer that because it's not just your crew these are all your followers so you see we've got all these people following but what's really important is if we go say to Barrett here and we look to the right we can see the skills that he is bringing to the particular role he's in so at the moment um, because we're on a ship, he is level 4 Starship Engineering and level 3 Particle Beam Weapon Systems, which is important because they apply when we're, on a, when we're on a ship. So, for example, if we take Starship Engineering, if we come out of here and go into here, we can look for Starship Engineering, Outpost, Chemistry, Astrophysics, Canning, Zoology, was it there? Let's find Starship Engineering. Starship Engineering. So he's level four. So occasionally repairing one block of a system will repair the iron system. So what it's saying here is so Starship Engineering, it takes skilled hands to not only make a ship systems more resistant to damage, but to repair those systems efficiently when damage um, does occur. So by having him on our ship, our ship will repair better and faster. In fact, occasionally you know when we when we apply a ship part the whole ship will be fixed which is fantastic so you can see he's a very powerful crew member to have on so let's look at see, see who else we've got so we have also got uh, where's Sarah so we've got Sarah now Sarah um, when she's on a ship she applies astrodynamics level 4 um, and then she also has laser, lasers leadership and botany so lasers three means that she's better with lasers as she's going along. Not quite sure what leadership and botany is, but we could, you know, you could look at those in the skill tree and see what does it bring. But astrodynamics four. So what you can see here is you can build a crew on your ship that brings skill unlocks that you then don't have to unlock yourself with your skill points in the skill tree. So that, that's pretty cool. Now you also have outposts, so we can see that on my outposts. I have got, for example, Lynn. She's on uh, my outpost on Kodos in the Cheyenne system. And she, when she's on an outpost, brings outpost management three, which I think it means I can have more people at the outpost. So how cool is that? Now, when you first take someone on, um, let's use this mini bob, for example. They're not really followers, but gives an example. So let's say you meet someone and they say, can I join your crew? Can I be a follower? You say, yes. They will then be unassigned. And then what you can do, if there is a vacancy, at, you know, on your ship or one of your outposts, when you select them, let's take Maura, you can then apply them to a particular place. So Maura, I can actually add them to my ship if I wanted to from the outpost, and you can move people around. And it generally doesn't happen straight away, but when you go through the next loading screen, they will then appear on your ship and do stuff. So that's why, for example, I got rid of my adoring fan, although he's not particularly useful on my outpost uh, in Zamka on the, in the Alpha Centauri system. He's, at least he's not bothering me by telling me how wonderful I am all of the time. So that should show you how useful uh, NPCs are in terms of skills and unlocks. Because some of the things like Starship Engineering 
or stealth level four, they, they took a lot of time to unlock. Now, we've talked about how they can be pack horses, but what you also want to do with your NPCs is to make them more powerful. You want to trade gear with them, and you want to make sure you give them a good gun. So you want to go into your weapons, and depending if they have a speciality, so they might be good with rifles or laser weapons or something like that, give them something that's really good. Um, and then give them, once you've given them that, so you can see the trade button, so I could give her that, then you want to make sure you give them some ammo. Now, you don't need to give them much ammo, because they have unlimited ammo, the NPCs. Well, they do at the moment when they're using it. So just give them the correct ammo for the particular gun, and just give them, like, you know, ten bullets or something like that, and that will keep them going forever. And also, give them one grenade as well, like one frag grenade, because they have unlimited grenades at the moment in the game. That may be patched out at some point. This makes them offensively very, very powerful indeed. Now, the other thing you can do, and I don't know how, um, uh, what difference this makes as well, but you can give them different clothes and different spacesuits with more armor. Um, if, for example, we go and have a look that at is Sarah. All. Very well. Where's she gone? There she is, she's standing at the back. The two of us, Snake. I'm here for you. I'll we can see that with Sarah, because I've been taking her around a lot. Uh, let's have a look. So that's on the frontier. I've given her quite a nice spacesuit to protect her. And a uh, nice... Ooh. Bring me anything you... Go back into it. and a nice helmet as well to protect her that way. Not sure how much difference this makes at the moment, but I would, it's something worth doing. So if as you are upgrading your spacesuit and your space helmet um, and your backpack and things like that, why not give your second hand ones that you were gonna get rid of, you're gonna sell them, um, give them to your um, companions so that they can gain that protection if that happens in the game. Um, also, I've given her a trauma pack. Now, when they do get too damaged, they don't die, your uh, companions or your followers, but they do go into a down state. And maybe with the trauma pack, I haven't seen them do this or a med pack, they might get up quicker when they go along. You can also change what they're wearing. So Sarah's got a hat on. Um, and what else has she got on? Ground crew jacket wear, that sort of stuff. That's why she looks like that rather than in her vanilla stuff. Bye, love. Now... You can only have one companion at a time who physically follows you around on missions. Um, but they're very easy to train, so, change. Sorry. So for example, Andrea, she's my companion at the moment. But I could just go up to Sarah and I can say, What's happening, darling? are you ready to head back out? I'm right behind you. She is now my Where's active um, companion and me. Andrea isn't. It's actually comforting to know that Andrea's Now this, as Thank far you. as I'm aware, and this doesn't make any difference to the characters, so they don't get pissed off if you, for example, um, want them to stop following you. You know, they're, they're cool with it. Like, oh, yeah, fine. The other thing you do is, if you're out on a mission and you just want them to stay still somewhere, just go up to them and you'll you'll talk to them and you'll see an option saying stay here for a while and you can, and they will just stay there um, until you you go up to them and talk to them. Or if you, if you fast travel somewhere, then they'll follow you that way. Uh, also, don't worry about them getting left behind when you're running around places and going up and down in lifts and elevators. They they kind of teleport to find where you are. So this means that you can take the best follower to be your companion for that particular mission in terms of the firepower they've got, or maybe they're good at persuading people or things like that. Um, and as you've seen as well, you can go in and you can go into your crew and you can move around the your followers that have the best. Um, skills for either the ship or the outpost and put them in the best location there. So there we go. I think I've covered most of the things you'll probably want to know about Starfield. I haven't gone into too many details about um, the nit nitty and gritty because you will come across those as well. Actually there is one other thing as well and that is when you go into the pause menu and you go into help there is a fantastic help section that goes through an awful lot of detail about what things are and, and what they do and how the different systems work. But honestly, with Starfield, treat it as an experience rather than something to beat and to complete. Um, and you'll enjoy it, I think, a lot more. And when I get kind of bored of doing a particular quest, I'm like, okay, I've had enough of... Because a lot of it is, go here, do this, go here, do this, shoot this enemy, da da da. I go off and I do some exploration, or I work on my outposts, 
um, and enjoy that side of Starfield, which is the world is outside of the main missions, which I think is the sort of thing that hopefully will be coming to like Cyberpunk um, with the new updates, where you can have a life in this amazing universe they have created outside of having to do the main quests, and it is interesting as well. Anyway, there we go. If you've got any other questions or comments, because I'm sure there's many, please put them down below. Thank you very, very much for watching. If you found the video useful, hit like, if you want to see more the same, press subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.